Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the second question here, and we're just going to take you through the um, the steps needed to find all the critical parts to it, and then we'll uh, put all those pieces on the graph, and then you'll sort of see exactly where the the, the test parts are that you need to do to, to fill in the shape of the curve. So we have a rational function here. The difference with this one is we've got um, sort of a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom. So the first thing we want to do here is let's uh, attempt to look at finding our vertical asymptotes. Okay, so the vertical asymptote is where essentially the, the, new, the denominator is going to be undefined. So what we need to do with this expression here first is we need to um, factor it and rewrite it. So what I would do in this case here is we could factor both the top and the bottom just to see what we're going to get. But we're going to take out a 2 out of the top here, so I'm going to be left with x minus 3. And then I've got this quadratic on the bottom. So if we're going to factor this, we, we need two factors to give us uh, positive 4 uh, to give us negative 5. So the only ones that will work for that is going to be x minus 4 and x minus 1. So our denominators are undefined when we have um, x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 4, and when we have x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x is equal to 1. So those are our two asymptotes that we are going to have that are vertical, because those are where our expressions are undefined. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is we want to find our horizontal asymptote. Okay, and again, what we can do in this case is we can use our limit technique um, from the other video where we are going to divide out um, basically the highest power of x from each term um, on the top and the bottom. So we want to do a limit, okay, as x goes to infinity, and we're going to have our factored form of our expressions here on top. So I'm just going to go back to the original um, equation because it's, it's easier to work from this one here. So we're going to take an x out of um, each term here. So if we take an x out of 2x, okay, we're going to pull the x out on the side. We are going to be left with the number 2 because we're going to factor out an x. But then we're also going to factor an x out of the 6. So again, if you remember how that worked, we're taking an x out of a, out of the 6, which means your, the fraction we would be having left would be 6 over x. Okay, so the way you want to think about it is how do, if I multiply these two terms together, I get the original expression back. So x times 2 is 2x. x times 6 over x, the x's would cancel, and I would just be left with the 6. So that that's what that factor means when I take it out that way. Okay, and then the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to factor out an x squared. So that I'm going to be left with a 1 minus. Then I'm going to take an x squared out of 5x, which means I'm going to be left with 5 over x, because, again, if we reverse and multiply this out, I'm going to have 5x squared divided by x. The One of the powers will cancel, and I'll be left with the original 5x. And then I'm going to also have here 4 over x squared. Okay, and there's no other x trailing term there. So again, we apply that, that concept of the limit going to infinity. That means this term is going to be a 0, this term is going to tend to 0, and this term is going to tend to 0. Okay, and then so what I'm going to have to be left over with here is... Um, that's going to be 2 minus 0, so that's going to kind of go away. And then I'm going to be left with 2x all over. Um, these both go to 0, so I'm going to have x squared times 1, which is just going to be x. And again, now we can also s further simplify this, because I can cancel one of the x's here. And then this is just going to become x to the first power, so I have 2 over x. And then again, as we get a very, very large number, 2 over a very, very large number means that we're tending towards a limit of 0. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be basically y is equal to 0. So it's going to be right on the, um, the x-axis here. Okay, so that's going to be um, our horizontal asymptote. So let me I'll just put a box around that so we can see that for later. 
and then we've got our vertical ones right here. Okay, then our third step here, like we did before, is does the function cross the um, cross the horizontal axis or the uh, horizontal axis, the horizontal asymptote? Okay, so the way we want to do that is we're going to take our original function and we set it equal to the horizontal asymptote. So we will do 2x minus 6 all over x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. And then we just are going to do our simple cross multiply with this. And what I get here is 2x minus 6 is equal to 0 or 2x is equal to 6, and I get a value here of x is equal to 3. So that means there is a solution. Okay, so a solution exists. So therefore, okay, we are going to get a cross on the horizontal asymptote at um, 3, comma zero because we have the asymptote is on the zero line y is equal to zero and at, at when we get to x equals three on the graph it is going to cross over okay so it's gonna we will get a cross on this and we'll just have to kind of figure out what the shape of this looks like okay and then number four we're going to find the x intercepts here so that means we set y equal to zero so again, we are we can put this into the um, original equation. So we set y is equal to zero. Now the thing you just got to remember is we just did that because the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals zero. So we know one of the intercepts um, where it crosses the horizontal asymptote, which just happens to be the same as the um, x-axis, we know it's going to cross at 0, comma, 3. Okay, so that is our x-intercept. And then our y-intercept, um, we're going to find the y-intercept. Okay, so that means we're going to set x equals to 0. So to do that, we can go back to our original equation. So we are just going to plug in zeros for everything. So it's going to be 2 times 0 minus 6 over 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 4. So this is going to give, so the zeros will go away. We're going to have negative 6 over 4 or um, negative 3 over 2. So we know our y-intercept here is going to be at a point 0, um, negative 3 over 2. Okay, so at this point, let's sketch what we know with our graph here. So let's change it to a different color here. So we know we have our um, vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1, or sorry, x equals 1, and then x equals 4, so 2, 4. So it's just over a little bit more right here. Okay, so... 1, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we also know that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, which is just the x-axis, so it's going to be right on the axis. It looks like that. We do know it's going to cross now the horizontal asymptote at the coordinate 3, 0. So we can put a dot right here. And we know that a line is going to cross through here. So that means something is going to look like this. I'm just going to draw the line partially in. But you can almost kind of guess how this is going to work because we know lines can't cross the vertical asymptotes, but we know it's crossed the horizontal one. So that means it's probably going to have to come from the top being positive, And then going down, it's going to be negative. Um, and again, you would just maybe test some values there, and then you can you'd be able to sketch in the shape of the curve. So we know that's true. And then we also know there's one x-intercept, which happens to be the same where it's crossing the, the axis, okay. And then we know that the y-intercept here is at 0 and negative 3 halves. So that means 
one and a half, so it's just going to be about right here. Okay, so at this point here, what you need to do is, again, I would do a little table of values for X and Y. Okay, but again, we're only really interested in the sign of the Y value. Um, okay, whether it's positive or negative, so you would just have to do... You, you will have to plug it into the into a calculator to probably generate the sign of the value. Um, but you've got the original expression. So, for example, here, if we are, let's just test the point here, negative 1. So when x is negative 1, what is the sign of the y value? We want to know whether it's um, above, or is, is it going to be still be negative, or is it going to be positive? Okay. Now, we already know that it's it's supposed to cross the horizontal asymptote and we know where it's crossing at that point. So we don't expect it to cross the horizontal asymptote any further because we, we've solved for the point where it's going to cross. So all the signs for whatever x values are should be a negative value here. Okay, so I'm just going to put a minus in. So if we did, if we tested a larger, or a smaller number, even more negative, like negative 10, we would still see the sign as being positive, as being negative. Okay, and then as we get closer to that vertical asymptote, um, we can check it. Okay, so let's just say 0 0.5. Okay, because remember, we can't check 1, but we can check 0 0.5. And then we will still see that this is a negative value. So that means this part of the curve is probably just going to be some curve shape that looks like this. And that turns down really steep like that. Okay, so something along there, as long as the, the lines don't touch the asymptotes, um, that's, that should be good enough for that. Okay, and we know it's going to cross here at 3, so we could test some other points here. So I can now test like the point 2. Okay, so remember we can't use 1, but we could use 2. And we're going to find that this should be a positive value. And then we know it's 0 at 3, so then if we tested something like 3.5, we should see that this is going to be a negative value here. So this curve is probably going to be something like this. Okay, and again it's pretty steep here. Uh, but you're just wanting to draw the approximate shape, and it's going to be one of these curves where we're going to have three parts to it. Okay, and then we don't have any other intercepts at all for the other part of this. So we would go past um, 4, so we could test points 5 when x is 5 and x is 6. Okay, and we should both see that these are both positive still. So that means that no matter what we're doing here, the y value is always going to be positive going past this, this intercept here. So this curve is probably going to be very, very steep coming down like this. It might even come in really sharper than that. Okay, and then, but it never crosses the, asymp the horizontal asymptote and it can't cross the vertical asymptote. So we would estimate our curves to look something like this. Okay, we've only had one the um, the crossover point we know is on the x-axis. We know where it's crossing on the y-axis. And we kind of know where all the signs of these y values are going to be, which we, you, we, we plug into the calculator and just get whether the sign is negative or positive. Okay, and then you would have to approximate the sketch of the graph. So this is the way that I would look at to trying to do this question so that you can answer... Um, find the critical points, and in this case you do have a cross of the horizontal asymptote because um, there is a solution when um, you set it to equal to the asymptote for the y value. And then um, just build a small table of values and really focus on just finding the sign of the numbers. You don't really need to find the actual number itself um, because you know the curves are going to fit inside the asymptotes and you know where, where it's going to supposed to cross and then not cross. Okay, so that's how I would look at trying to go through this question, um, finding all the critical values.